Thank you, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, it's 3 o'clock. I am happy to call this meeting uh, to order the Community Oversight Board a general body April meeting to order. Um, for roll call, uh, we will uh, go in order. I will call each member's name, ask if you are present, if you could simply unmute yourself for a moment. Uh, to answer, uh, and then that will help us establish quorum. Uh, so I'll uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Present. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Mr. Goddard, are you here? Present. Thank you, Dr. Hildred, are you here? Okay, no. Dr. Fieldrift, quite yet. Okay. Um, next will be Mr. Holloway. Are you here? I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Hughes, are you here? Mr. Hughes, are you here? Apologies, I am here. Uh, I always am here. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Miss uh, oh, uh, Dr. Lewis, are you here? Dr. Lewis, so you don't see Dr. Lewis quite yet, okay. And then uh, next will be Mr. Martinez, are you here? Here. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Ms. Ross, are you here? Present. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney, are you here? Yes. Thank you, and Mr. Witzel, are you here? Present. Thank you, and uh, Chair Davis, myself, here as well, so we have Nine of the 11 members of the board present we, uh, have more than enough for quorum to move forward. Um, before I um, recognize Mr. Inkley here um, to speak to us about the telephonic meeting, just want to uh, pause for a moment here. Let's read the appeals uh, statement here. So pursuant to the provisions of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, please take notice the decisions of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County Community Oversight Board may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of cert. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure the time and procedural requirements are met. With that, Mr. Hinkley, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and um, guiding us in the next section of the uh, agenda here to discuss the telephonic meeting. Absolutely. Uh, so as, we, as we've done with the other two meetings that we've done electronically, uh, the board will have to vote on the record that the COVID-19 pandemic requires it to hold a telephonic meeting as permitted under the governor's executive order number 16. So we'll just need someone to move that the meeting uh, that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, this is uh, I'll make the motion. Is that Mr. Sweeney? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Is anyone second? I'll second. I second. And actually, uh, I rec recognize we're not in a standard space, so if you wouldn't mind using the raise the hand there, and I'll just be very quick to acknowledge there, um, and we'll do that moving forward. But I, I think I first heard Mr. Martinez. Uh, Mr. Martinez, are you seconding? Yes. Okay, thank you. Some motion made by Mr. Sweeney, seconded by Mr. Uh, Martinez. Thank you. Any focus discussion on the issue here? Okay. If not, uh, we'll do a, a quick roll call vote for all those in favor, uh, you nay, or if you want to abstain, absolutely up to you. Mr. Campbell Gooch? Aye. Mr. Goddard? Aye. Mr. I'll say Dr. Hildred? She's not quite with us yet. Mr. Holloway? Aye. Mr. Hughes? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Mr. Martinez? Aye. Ms. Ross? Aye. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. And Mr. Witzel? Aye. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I uh, vote aye as well. Thank you. The motion carries, passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Pingley. I think uh, next here is for us. Um, sorry, I'm switching between a lot of screens here. Um, but next on our agenda here is for us to have an approval of the minutes. Um, does everyone have, an, uh, have that in front of them, have an opportunity to review the minutes as well? On here. Let me do this correctly. Ms. Uh, Director Fitchard, am I correct that this was um, our last minutes would be, in fact, wouldn't be, but uh, February because we didn't discuss them in March. So is that um, the ones that we should be taking up for review today? That's correct. Okay, is there a, a motion on the floor here? I actually don't have these particular ones up for me, but I always save them after I review them. Uh, is there any discussion here or is there a motion for approval for the February minutes of the last general body? Mr. Campbell Gooch. I motion, I motion to approve. Thank you. Mr. Campbell Gooch has moved to approve the minutes. Anyone second? Ms. Ross? I second. Thank you, Ms. Ross. Uh, with that, is there any focus discussion? Okay. With that, we'll take a vote then. Uh, all those in favor, I or those that abstain, want to abstain or nay. Uh, Mr. Campbell Gooch? Aye. Mr. Goddard? Aye. Dr. Hildreth? Mr. Holloway? I approve. Mr. Hughes? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Mr. L Mr. Martinez? Aye. Ms. Ross? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. And Mr. Witzel? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Ashley Davis vote uh, aye as well. Thank you very much. We we'll approve the minutes. Um, next, um, Mr. Sweeney, uh, I have, uh, I know that both uh, Mr. Pinkley and, and as well as we've received some hard work from our, our colleague, Mr. Sweeney, but I'd like to um, go next to the amendment of the COB bylaws. And so, Mr. Pinkley, if you could get us started here just with general uh, occasion and purpose here and then um, Ms. Sweeney, if you wouldn't mind also just being unmuted here to offer some guidance here too, that'd be helpful. Uh, so the, the amendment of the bylaws comes about because of how quickly the, the coronavirus outbreak led to the shutdown of Metro government. Uh, because of how quickly everything was shut down and a uh, safer at home order was put into place, there wasn't anything within our bylaws that granted emergency powers essentially to the chair to cancel the March meeting. Um, obviously that had to be done because there was nowhere for us to hold a public meeting at that time. So what this amendment takes into account is transferring kind of an emergency power to, to the chair of the COB in the event that there is some unforeseen circumstance like uh, a pandemic outbreak or uh, natural disaster of some kind or a, a declaration of a state of emergency, either federally or locally. Uh, so it basically is just a provision that would allow, in this instance, Chair Davis to cancel a board meeting without having to convene a full board meeting to determine to cancel a board meeting. Uh, there's also a couple of other provisions. Um, this was sent out, uh, apologies for sending it out so late, but it was sent out right before the board meeting so everyone would have ready access to it. Uh, there's also a section that is directed for how the board will hold those meetings in the event that there is an emergency such as this. Um, essentially that takes governor's uh, executive order 16 and kind of puts that into the bylaws. Uh, and then there will also be a provision that grants uh, the board the ability to overrule the chair's decision to cancel a board meeting if they if there's not an agreement that that meeting needed to be canceled. Uh, Mr. Sweeney, did I, did I miss anything? No, I think that probably. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so we uh, all have this in front of us. With that, with all the information we just received, is there anyone that would like to propose a motion to this effect? Uh, 
so please raise your hand. Um, we'll call you, call on you, so you can uh, make that motion if you'd like. Or is there any discussion anyone would like to have related to this um, proposed amendment to the bylaw? Mr. Sweeney, I'll make the motion to approve the draft rule or draft provision. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Anyone uh, second? Mr. Martinez. I second. Thank you. See here, I can do this function here. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. I saw you as well. Apologies. Um, but I saw the motion was made uh, initially by Mr. Sweeney, seconded by Mr. Martinez. Um, with that, is there any focused discussion? Mr. Hughes. Yes, just uh, just some small clarification. I just want to make sure this is essentially us voting on allowing for us to, to move forward with this emergency provision. This is just in this particular instance, correct? I, I think it's beyond this particular instance. This would uh, put it in place for any future ones because we're going to go back in the next conversation. We actually, depending on how we vote here, to do retroactive actions here. But let me yield to Mr. Pinkley here uh, for further clarification here. That's correct. So this would address any future emergency issue uh, that came up. So for example, if our board meeting was scheduled the same day that, or the day after the, the tornado had hit North Nashville and our, our meeting was scheduled for North Nashville and there wasn't the opportunity to reschedule, you could cancel that meeting. Uh, so if in the future there's another, for example, tornado or some other issue that affects the, abil the board's ability to meet, uh, this would give the chair the ability to cancel that meeting if necessary. I appreciate that clarification. And it also helps me to understand that this is also retroactive and can be applied to other entities. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Pinkley, you want to speak to that? You want to be, make sure folks are clear? Yeah. Uh, yes, so what will happen after the board vote on this is we will take up the decision to cancel the March 2020 meeting uh, because the provision didn't exist at the time that the meeting was canceled. Uh, we have to approve the bylaw uh, amendment and then take a vote from the full board to approve the decision to have canceled the March 2020 meeting. Does that make sense, Mr. Hughes? I know it's, it's a bit... Um it's both connected and disconnected at the same time but is that is that clear it's a bit of a uh, a rhetorical dance but i do understand i think mm -hmm. i have a clarity on it okay thank you any other uh conversation discussion here anyone else on the board okay and with that uh we'll take a vote here um mr campbell gooch hi mr goddard hi Dr. Hildred? Yes, aye. Thank you. Mr. Holloway? Mr. Holloway? You're still on mute for us there. I'm sorry, um, aye. Not a problem, thank you. Mr. Hughes? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Dr. Lewis, okay. Mr. Martinez. Aye. Ms. Ross? Aye. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. And Mr. Witzel? Aye. Thank you very much. Chair, I vote aye as well. Uh, the motion carries and passes. Thank you. Uh, next uh, here is um, in light of the newly approved bylaws. As a board, um, we need to uh, consider and uh, vote on um, the decision uh, for the, to cancel the March 2020 meeting. So, um, Mr. Pinkley, do you want to uh, lead us in that conversation there? Sure. Uh, so basically, it's, it's essentially what I discussed in the previous uh, item. Because the authority didn't technically exist within the bylaws when Chair Davis canceled the March 2020 meeting, we now have to retroactively approve that decision to cancel the meeting in light of the newly approved bylaws. Um, if there's any other questions, I can try to address those. I think I saw Mr. Campbell Gooch with your hand raised there. Yeah, I was ready to make a motion, but I wanted to allow people time and opportunity to inquire. 
Okay. Uh, any uh, questions or conversation, discussion points here? Not, is there a motion here? I'll acknowledge Mr. Campbell Gooch. Yeah, a motion to retroactively approve the cancellation of the March board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Anyone second? Mr. Hughes? I will second that, uh, that motion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Campbell Gooch made the motion. It's been seconded by Mr. Hughes. Um, any focused discussion here? Not, uh, Mr. Goddard will vote. Mr. Goddard? Aye. Apologies, I skipped over Mr. Campbell Gooch as well. Mr. Campbell Gooch, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, I said Dr. Hildred. Thank you. Mr. Holloway. Aye. Mr. Hughes. Aye. And Dr. Lewis. Absent. Mr. Martinez. Aye. Ms. Ross. Aye. Mr. Sweeney. Aye. Mr. Witzel. Aye. Thank you. Chair Davis, I, I vote aye as well. Thank you. So we have um, moved through uh, the important uh, business that we needed to take care of, especially as it relates to um, any future requirements as it relates to emergencies that may not permit us to have an in-person meeting. So thank you uh, to everyone on the board here. Next here we have um, the uh, chair remarks. My remarks are want to be very short because usually in this space, I'm just simply offering an update on any meetings uh, or calls that I may have had, but just due to the nature of the world that we are in, not had any in-person meetings and um, very uh, small number of uh, phone meetings as well as it relates to COB uh, business. I do want to just share um, a couple of things. And I know that um, uh, Executive Director um, Fitchard would offer, offer in much more detail, but I, have in the past and will continue to just acknowledge when we have new members uh, in our space, in our midst here. And we are really fortunate to have Mr. Chris Clossy, who joined uh, the MNCO staff as assistant director um, just before all of us uh, began to be shuttered in, in, in our homes and uh, quarantined in place. So I want to welcome him and, and I'm sure Director Fitcher will give him space and time um, to say hello, but Mr. Clossy, we're certainly happy to have you and your background and leadership here uh, within the COB, so welcome to you. Um, I also want to just note very quickly, and I had quick notes here. So we will, uh, earlier this morning, uh, today, about maybe two, maybe three, four hours ago, I um, saw an article online, I'm not sure if Many other members of the board have seen it, um, but there was an uh, article in the Tennessee in the Tennessean uh, that noted that uh, the city will not be moving forward with the full police uh, body camera program due to budgetary constraints and rules. And uh, that was my first time hearing or seeing anything about this uh, this decision. I know that you know it is budget season and budgets are due very soon uh, in Metro. But this is my first time hearing that a decision had been made uh, to not move forward uh, with the second phase and then the full implementation of the body worn camera um, uh, use and policy. And so uh, two things. One, um, once I learned of this, I did reach out to uh, Director Fitcher. We have not connected, however, Director Fitcher, if you could please give us as thorough and detailed of an understanding of just timeline of your understanding of this decision, what comes next, that would be greatly helpful for all of us to hear and to know. And then secondly, um, because I wasn't able to connect with Dr. Fitcher and also because we just need as much clarity on this quickly as possible, I reached out to John Button and uh, asked for a call. I was hoping to talk to him before um, the meeting today to share out whatever I might learn, but he was unavailable, so we will be speaking uh, later this week, before the end of the business week, uh, and I will be sure um, to share uh, with the board uh, just what the plans are next. I understand that 
we are in tough times, unprecedented times. Um, but I, along with many others here, I'm sure you have uh, listened to and been made aware that there are discussions around uh, the raising of property taxes and other means of re revenue and resources to the city. And we simply want to make sure that the body uh, cameras um, continue to be prioritized in the right way. Um, but we, they, I'll open this up if any members of the board have anything else they want to make sure that is asked or said on this topic. But as this news is literally just a few hours old for me, there's not much more I can as your chair share with you. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Um, we also uh, have um, everyone already in advance for, you know, one, to coming together for the trial run of this space, but also for us continuing to just continue to be great members of this board, to give our time, to also continue to be good professionals in this space, uh, whether we are in agreement or in dissenting opinions. So I'm thanking everyone for that as well. Um, that completes and uh, concludes my um, chair remarks, but let me pause here. If anyone has any questions about anything that I've mentioned, um, as I always try to do here at the end of this, Mr. Holloway. Yes, um, I think we still need to make the uh, the, the uh, camera a priority because the only thing they're going to do is continue to kick it down the road for a later day. But we still need to stay on top of it and make it a uh, high priority. Yes, sir. I'll make sure that. Uh, in fact, I appreciate the the idiom of. You know, they say a lot of time kicking the can down the road, Mr. Holloway, I think exactly what you're saying, and I'll make sure we, we express that too. Yes, sir. Uh, anyone else on the board? Ms. Uh, Ms. Ross. Ms. Ross. Uh, did anybody from the mayor's office contact Jill or, or you in terms of what they were rolling out? Because actually it came out this morning on his corona uh, report. So was there any contact or, uh, between the board and the mayor's office or the police department prior to this announcement? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Ross, I can tell you as far as uh, I myself, I had I was not aware of this at all. I'll um, wait and yield if, uh, Director Pitchard, if you can answer that uh, on your end, that'd be greatly helpful because I can tell you that I did not uh, have any awareness of it at all on my end. I'll pause actually there because before we just be able, you know, let's just stay on the same thread here. Director Pitchard, if you could speak to that, let's do that before we, we move over to any other questions anyone else might. Sure. Yeah, I, I had no idea about the, the delay. When I spoke to Captain Whited, and I'm going to talk about that in my ED report, he mentioned that there was a delay um, in the rollout for May because of some infrastructure damage for the tornado. He wasn't aware of anything beyond that in his email to me he said that you know as far as the you know for any further rollouts on but on um body camera was that he was just he, there was just a waiting period because of the strain on metro budget but he didn't say you know he didn't make an affirmative announcement in regards to that there would be a, a delay for the rollout so I had no knowledge of that. Mr. Ross, any follow-up questions or statement there? On that? No, I'm just a real disappointed that, you know, we try hard to work with uh, the mayor's office and the police mm -hmm. department and for them not to contact us before uh, putting that out in the news this morning is real disappointing to me. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree, Mr. Ross, and, um, and I, uh, I think I just shared, I reached out to Mr. Button, but uh, in my email, I used the word disappointment. Um, disappointing, I also made it very clear that this call, this was a shock to me, um, and that it will, without a doubt, be a shock to the board, uh, and that we quickly needed to hear from him. Now, his response to me was that he was currently um, in the midst of working on um, I'm, assuming, I'm, sh I'm sure they're re responding to things related to the, the virus and how they can slowly but safely reopen the city. And I said, thank you for the response. But if you can imagine, this is as important for us, too, to understand what's going on. Um, but I've been taking the, I'm taking notes here of what you said and Mr. Holloway as well. And I welcome the board, other board members to tell me you know, exactly what we want to be shared out. 
Um, and I also think, quite frankly, that the community needs to be uh, fully informed both of what we've been told and what we learn over the next coming days, um, because it simply will not be enough. We, we've heard the same song every single time, um, and there will always be something going on. So um, I, I absolutely agree with you, and I'm, uh, there's, I'm not short of saying I'm just rather frustrated by it, too. It doesn't show a lot of collaborative spirit. Mr. Campbell Gooch. Um, yes, so I, um, I had a couple suggestions for what type of information we want to know from, from Bunty, uh, Chair. And like also, like I'm fine with like bending on these. These are just like suggestions and mm -hmm. my curiosity. So I'm very curious if there's going to be a limit number of body cameras being rolled out, where exactly those body cameras will be. If there's going to be a limited number, they should be able to tell us exactly what precinct these body cameras are going to be in because we know if they're pulled in particularly high crime areas or places where there are a high police presence, that they will all that they will automatically produce a unequitable situation. So my first question is just like where the body cameras are going to be pulled. Then we also, when I read the article earlier, there's still a lack of clarity around the actual realistic price tag. It seems like we're still functioning off the Cadillac price tag that the DA presented to us early on. So also a, clarif a clarifying question around the cost and sure. also um, a question around the access. We still, I don't think I very specifically don't know how we're gonna access those cameras. I don't know if there have been further discussion with the DA. And then lastly, um, how can we make, it, it was 46 from what I read in the, uh, in Director, Pictures report. I think it was 46 cameras, if I'm recalling it right. So, and each and each officer gets two. I know 46 officers getting cameras. Each mm -hmm. officer getting two cameras. Uh, I don't want to do no crazy math on that because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's like 92. But uh, is there a way that we can spread those out and instead of each officer getting two cameras, each officer get one body worn camera instead of having a dash cam and a body worn camera? So, mm -hmm. I'm just. Yeah, so that's just where my brain is going. So clarity around where the body cams will be, clarity around the cost and the actual price tag, the access that we might be able to have as a board, and any type of ideas that are being talked about around stretching out this phase one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Director Fitcher. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something that um, Mr. Campbell Gooch mentioned. So there's only 23 cameras and officers get two. So that's where the 46 number came from. So it's 23 body cameras. They get an additional camera and then there's, tw there's 23 in-car cameras. So the in total, so with the same kind of setup here, I guess Mr. Campbell Gooch's question is, could we end up outfitting 46 uh, officers instead of 23? Is that, am I taking that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Director Fitcher, anything else you think we should, the board should be aware of or know on this topic? Well, yeah, it's in my, I was going to highlight it, but I can go ahead and talk about that now if you want. I'll tell you what, I mean, I don't have, the board doesn't have anything else for me here. Anyone else have any questions related to the chair remarks? Because if not, we can just uh, transition over and move into the executive director report. Okay. Uh, I right. have another question. Okay. Ms. Okay. Chair Davis. Mm hmm um, and, and I think also, could we could we bring up the point that when we're not getting, uh, and I don't know how to eloquently put this chair, so please excuse mm -hmm. me for it, about how harsh this language is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way we can inquire about getting a consistent liaison to the mayor's office? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or that just one that puts more effort? I don't know. I don't know how to put that, chair. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. And, um... And I think it, we've actually, Mr. Campbell Gooch, if I'm hearing you correctly, we've raised this before, right? 
Yes, we have. And I think that's the point of contention for me. Like we keep raising this same thing, but I'm willing to, I mean, I think, I think the board's position should be, uh, uh, like big brother in a sense where we're just constantly trying to just like push, 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 you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To a certain extent. So mm -hmm. I don't want them to forget like we need an official liaison to the mayor's office who was almost mm -hmm. a board member at certain point at certain points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Any other comments, uh, statements here? I have all of this marked down, everyone. I'll make sure that any and everything I, I can find and get as a response here. Um, and I'm sure you had that commitment also from Dr. Fitcher as she learns things, we'll be sure to share that. Um, with that, though, I will uh, go on mute here and give the floor to Director Fitcher for her report. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. So I, um, I have been in contact with Deputy Chief Hager um, and asked him, especially when it, was coming, when it was pertaining to roll call briefings and how Metro was going to move forward during the tornado and, you know, with officers are going to have some discretion in how they may arrest um, in lieu, uh, give, give citations in lieu of an arrest. And I was very clear in my email to Deputy Chief Hager that we were CJ stakeholders and that we needed to be informed of changes and that if policy or if there were briefings that came out that we needed to, you know, that he needed to make certain that we were a part of that conversation. And so I am a little um, disappointed that I had no um, idea about the delay of the body worn cameras. I talked to, I, I'm sorry, I emailed with um, Captain Blaine Whited, and that was on a Friday, April the 17th, when he gave me a very detailed report. Um, and so that was the end of the conversation as it pertained to body worn cameras. And so I, was, I had no knowledge of the delay in that. But I'll get back to that. I want to, I don't want to kind of, be all over the place. I want to stick to my script here. And so I'll come back to that. So um, first, I just wanted to introduce Mr. Christopher Clausey, our new assistant director. He started with the MNCO on March the 16th, and he celebrated his one month anniversary a few days ago. And we're happy to have him. He's already made a, a, a huge impact on the operations of the MNCO. And I just wanted to thank him and give him an opportunity to say something. Mr. Clausey. Thank you, Director Fisher. It is great to be part of the team. It's great to be working with everybody. Uh, the month has flown by. Uh, I feel like we've come a long way in a short period of time, and I am just thrilled to be here and moving forward with this great board. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I want to discuss the emergency meeting. After our last board meeting on February 26, an emergency meeting was requested with the Mayor's negoci Negotiation Task Force to discuss the issue of the location of interviews for MNPD officers and MNCA investigators. The Mayor's Criminal Justice Liaison, John Bunton, came to the office on Friday afternoon, February the 28th, to discuss my concerns and the concerns that were raised at the board meeting and figure out a date for the emergency meeting. On Tuesday, March the 3rd, a tornado ripped through the city and left a trail of devastation. As the recovery efforts for the tornado took place, a few days later, COVID-19 shows up in Nashville. And at that moment, I decided at that time that the location issue, while it is extremely important, but that would have to be addressed at a later date when the city was out of harm's way and we were back to some sort of normalcy. I shared my concerns with Chair Davis and Dr. Hildred. And with the stay at home order from our mayor and the governor's safer at home order in place, and to limit the amount of exposure to the COVID-19 um, virus, we have not rescheduled the meeting, but have been in contact with the complainants who have found this delay to be acceptable until we're able to address the issue again. And so we had an update on that. Um, the update came today, um, a few, not, not long ago, when Mr. Clausey reached out and spoke with OPA Director Kathy Moranti, and they are working on setting up phone interviews for cases that were discussed at the last board meeting regarding the location issue with the officers. And hopefully those meetings will take place next week if the schedules allow. Additionally, the MNCO successfully transitioned to working remotely 
And I want to give a huge thanks to Metro ITS Director Keith Durbin and his team. They have been instrumental in our ability to continue providing services to the public without interruption as we move from a physical location to telecommuting. We are, we are still able to receive complaints and work our investigations with the same level of attentiveness as when we are in the office and we currently have a total of open um, eight open cases. Also, I have been in contact with Deputy Chief Hager, Director Kathy Moranti, and Captain Wyatt, and they all have been responsive to my request, and I have sent several requests. Um, Captain Wyatt, who oversees the body-worn camera unit, sent me a detailed report on the launch of the cameras in March. He stated that the 23 officers were equipped with two, with two body cameras, and in the cars, 23 cars um, had in-car cameras. And as of April the 11th, there was 3,373 videos recorded, and with about 30% of those being daily test videos. He reported that there has not been any major challenges and that the pilot went well. Um, he said that most of the issues have been related to technology and have not been employee or policy related and that they continue to iron out issues daily. I do wanna say that when I, I reached out to him, he did not reach out to me, but anyway. Um, May's deployment has been delayed. This is what his email said. May's deployment has been delayed because of several factors. The tornado struck several locations, damaging key infrastructure needed for the camera program. That problem is being worked on by police and Metro ITS departments. The COVID-19 crisis, he stated, has prevented training and vehicle installation of the in-car cameras because the trainers and the installers live out of state and they're having difficulty getting parts. He was unable to give more information and was waiting to learn more about Metro's budget to determine what is next. And he believed that officers see the cameras as a beneficial tool and are very supportive of having them. That's all I have on the body-worn cameras. The next topic is we have requested 13 non-lethal use of force reports that are related to um, emergency communication notifications that I received. Um, during the months of January to April. We have received two of the 13 reports that have been requested. Some requests are in a pending state and others have been denied with the Rule 16 provision cited that um, there's an open criminal investigation attached to those reports. Um, but however, it's my belief that MNCO should have access to those reports, whether attached to an open criminal case or not, because it is within the scope of the foundation of what we do as an oversight agency and what we've been created upon, which is the ability to ascertain and attract patterns of abuse and or misconduct. And finally, I want to thank the MNCO research analyst, especially Ms. Liz Orozco for her outstanding work on the policy advisory report examining local law enforcement policies and immigration enforcement actions. And give a special thanks to the community oversight board members for approving and adopting the policy advisory report. The report was emailed to Chief Anderson, the mayor's office, the vice mayor, city council members, the Department of Emergency Communications, and other CJ, CJ stakeholders and community stakeholders. And those are my highlights. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Dr. Fitcher. Mr. Campbell Gooch. Um, I have a I have a few questions. Um, when we talk about being a like when, director, when we talk about being a CJ stakeholder, does that come with any access to uh, what does that come with? That's my first question. Well, from what I would say that it comes with is to have access to those whatever documents that they're sharing amongst each other. Um, that would be information that they're sharing. If they're having meetings, that I need to be involved in those meetings and invited to those meetings um, and basically having a seat at the table. And I have been in communication with Deputy Chief Hagar and expressed that to him. And he has, you know, emailed me information. But as for having any type of, you know, meeting, sitting a roundtable discussion or being invited to meetings that hasn't happened. So, so uh, just for clarity, it's like an official designation, right? I believe that it is an official designation. Um, 
when I think of CJ stakeholders, I'm looking at the list of who is involved in the meetings. Um, they used to have, um, I, when, when Marcus was available, um, it, when we, you know, Marcus, um, um, can't remember his last name, sorry. Um, when he was the CJ, when he was the liaison, I'm sorry. When Marcus was the liaison, you know, there was, he, you know, kind of facilitated this CJ stakeholders and meetings and communication. And so I was just looking back on who was on that and it was the public defender, the, the, the it was the public defender, it was the um, district attorney, it was CJ planning. Um, I think it also involved the sheriff's office and some other entities that were considered CJ stakeholders. Um, okay, and so as a CJ stakeholder, that's where um, you talked about, like, we should get access because we're CJ stakeholders and the other CJ stakeholders get access to those documents. So my question is, is just like, where can we support you in advocating for full, uh, I don't know the word, but for participation, where we can just make that seamless or streamline it in a sense? Well, I think that that would come with sitting down and having a conversation with the CJ, the CJ liaison, which is Mr. John Bunton. Um, I think that, you know, with him taking over the position, I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what he thinks that our role is. Um, I'm sure he knows that, you know, we are involved with this, you know, with the community. I'm sorry, with the criminal justice system. And so I think that it starts with him. Um, to make certain that everyone, you know, continues to include us. Okay, and then, uh, Chair, if you don't mind, I just have two more two more questions. I don't want to take up all the time. Um, and then, uh, in, your, in your correspondence with Chief Hager and uh, Whitehead I, about the body-worn cameras, have we had any conversations with them or have they shared any information about how we can get access to the footage? Or about a system no. behind how we get access to the footage. Yeah, that was one. Was going to be one of my follow-up questions. I did not reach out to him and ask him about the footage yet. When I talked with the last time that I brought that up with the chief at the at the when they were talking about it, I asked about you know how we would go up about obtaining footage, and his response that we would make a public records request like we do with everything else. And so I just did follow up with um, Captain White to find out if that is still. Um, in place or if they have created some other type of, um, you know, some other type of pipeline for us to get that footage. Okay, and then, and then my last question is about the KPIs, about the um, the mayor's performance mm -hmm. numbers. Yes. But, I don't, but yes. I don't know if you want to talk about that before I ask the question, because we didn't really go over that. Okay, I can talk about it. Um, when I met with Myself and Mr. Valier and Ms. Person met with the budget performance management team. Um, they asked us to submit to them um, some KPI, some metrics, um, and we created some. It was we created ten. They wanted. I thought it was going to be three. Um, they read over them uh, um, the performance management team, and after they read over them, they came back with these were the. Um, the key performance indicators that they wanted us to be tracking every month. And those would be the complaints received, the complaint dispositions, the time spent on complaint investigations, community engagement events, residents reach through community engagement, non-complaint calls for service, time spent on non-complaint assistance, and MMPD records requests. And so we received that back and they said that the mayor wanted those um, every the third Monday of each month beginning in July. And we also um, gave them some some numbers, metrics for the next three years. Uh, well, you know, we didn't, because we didn't have any um, background and we didn't have any um, numbers from previous years, we just kind of um, guesstimated on, for lack of a better word, on what we thought that um, our projections would be. Okay, and, and thank you for that. And um, I guess my next question, my next statement isn't a question. It's more just like um, an open topic for further consideration of the board chair. Um, mm -hmm. I think 
it would I think it would be beautiful if we had a comprehensive discussion discussion as a as a board with the staff just to talk about what these numbers mean and how we measure success by these numbers. Mm -hmm. Because for instance, uh, and also what I would also am curious about what the mayor's office considers success when they when they're measuring our KPIs. Mm -hmm. Because I personally think if a high number of complaints is a success because that means community members are yeah. using the service. But somebody else might think that a high number of complaints is not a success because then that means people are complaining on police officers. So I would like to have that discussion. Maybe not right now because this is a digital forum and therefore we can't, we're not seeing each other, you know, because so much can be communicated that way. But I do want to raise that topic up as a thing that I think would we would benefit talking about. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. I, um, it's an important point here, um, and this is new to, I mean, as Director Fitchard is sharing here as well, I, I personally, I prefer in-person meetings. I would also just want to keep in mind, I think this is important, but uh, Director Fitcher, keep me honest here. I think you said this would start to be activated in July. Is that correct? Yes, <laughs> July. So we have just really two months before this would need to be submitted for the first time. So perhaps uh, um, there's agreement and interest here. We can look at uh, perhaps, you know, the end of May um, or a conversation like this, unless others feel that this isn't necessary. I'd love to hear from members of the board if others feel similarly. Um, I see Ms. Ross. Yes, I, I agree and think that it's necessary that we look at that. And then I had one or two other points I wanted to bring up mm -hmm. in terms of the body one cameras. They have a video of 3,373 3, videos of what? What are they videoing? Mm -hmm. I like to know that. And I'm looking at the uh, complaint log and seeing one weekend, I guess the last weekend of March. We had several, the staff had several calls on complaints, and um, looked like discourtesy, most of the discourtesy, and but has there been a rise in complaints since coronavirus? Um, so, I don't know the answer to what are they video recording. Um, I'm assuming their interactions with the public. Um, I'm a, and then also remember 30% of those um, are, are some of those are test videos as well, just to make certain the equipment is working properly. And I think that um, our, we have had a steady rise in complaints. I don't know if it's because we are, you know, making certain that we are more accessible um, through, um, we've come up with some platforms on social media to make certain that people are aware that we're here, that they can make their complaints. Um, and I think, you know, just making certain that people know how to go about making complaints. Um, you know, that's why we put out a survey to see if people know that they have options in making those complaints. And so I would say that there has been, and, you know, if you look at the numbers, yeah, I think that in the month of March, we receive more complaints um, than we normally get in this new stage that we're still in. So I would say yes. Mr. Holloway? Uh, let me say this. Um, a high number of complaints is not a success. It's de it determines the type of complaints that you get. So you have to keep in mind some of those complaints are just people uh, just blowing off the, just blowing the steam off, you know, and it's not a success, you know. But you have kind of have to analyze and see which one is beneficial. Uh, one is a real legit complaint. And, and can I can I interject really quick and and get Mr. Valier on the phone, Dr. Valier, because he was in the meeting and he can tell you a little bit more about the particular um, KPIs and numbers. Um, some of the stuff that they mentioned are things that we were going to be keeping track of anyway. Um, so, Dr. Valier, can you kind of come on and touch base on the KPIs? 
Sure. So the key performance indicators are designed to track our uh, the productivity in our office so that, and to show uh, the work that we're doing in order to serve the community and to inform the mayor's office that we are meeting community needs. Uh, we want to make sure that we're tracking the amount of people that we're coming in contact with, both through complaints, through requests for information and assistance, through non means, and then also through community events. So we designed those metrics. We are trying to holistically look at some of the main functions of our department so that we can really show the amount of work that we're doing and the ways that we're serving the community. So I would, I would like to also make the point that the number of complaints is neither good nor bad, but what it shows is the amount of uh, people in the community who do, who have felt that they um, need to make a complaint and, and those are the people that we're working with to help. So we are, we wouldn't put sort of a good or bad value judgment on uh, the number of complaints, but because each complaint we work up um, and work with those people to make sure that, that their needs are met. And I'd like to just say one thing about that. Those metrics that you see on there, those are metrics that myself and Peter came up with. Doc, I'm sorry, myself and Dr. Valier came up with. Mr. Sweeney. Yes, um, on kind of the broader budget issues um, as the mayor is coming through this, have, have we received any information from the mayor's office that relates directly to our budget and what we should anticipate and then whether there's any ability to respond um, when and if we hear anything from the mayor's office proposing some kind of cut to our budget? Yes, so we haven't heard anything in regards to our, our, our yearly budget, our annual budget. Um, there have been a, some conversations. Um, I talked to the budget analyst, I want to say uh, last week, um, and initially I, we had requested that we get a rental increase. Um, and so he said that that probably would not go through um, simply because we had some budget operating budget funds still available that were not you know used up for the before the that will not be used up before the end of the fiscal year um so that would be probably reabsorbed into the general fund um and then secondly i received an email on monday um asking would i would I be interested in extending our lease for one for one year so that they could, you know, kind of renegotiate the rental price? That if we were able to get a, another year on our lease, so it would go from 48 months um, to 60 months, then they would ask for a reduction in our overall rent for those five years. And so I was in agreement with that. And that's the only thing that I've heard so far. We have not been granted a or requested to meet with the council. Um, there was only a small amount of um, departments that were required to meet with the council in a meeting, in a budget meeting. And so, um, yeah, we haven't had any more um, communication in regards to if our budget would be impacted. Has there been any contingency request that's been made to our department along with other departments? You know, for example, you know, a 5% cut, a 2% cut, anything like that? Yeah, no, we haven't heard anything about that at all. Mr. Holloway, did your hand raise there? Yes, uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Hill to give me Jill, a question about uh, the invest how many investigators do you have? We have um, three investigators and then dire um, assistant director Clausey is over the, um, the investigators um, and he is investigating his case himself. So I would say we would have four. Okay. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Holloway, you broke up. Mr. Holloway, I think you have a, a, your connection is a bit spotty right now. Are you asking about their cell phone use, if they have personal cell phones? Yes, okay. uh, do they have company cell phones? Yeah, we have, uh, we have metro government cell phones. Okay, I, I didn't know, and if, uh, if you didn't, I was gonna take, put that in your budget, you know, so you can get some good equipment. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I think that's a good segue into the fact that Metro government, uh, Metro Police Department, they all were just outfitted with new um, iPhone 11 smartphones that were supposed to be used in conjunction with body cameras. So I don't know how that's going to go forward, but they were all, um, patrol was all outfitted with new iPhone 11s. And that was the intended cause of it? Is that why taxpayers paid for that? That's correct. Is there a memo or anything that states that? Um, I don't have a memo. I just was some, I just was told that information, and but I can see if I have something of that nature. It'd be uh, helpful to understand if that's been uh, if that was the intended purpose when they made the requisition, um, especially uh, since that's a very bold and. Um, heavy price tag approach to taking something on that they uh, have been less than enthusiastic about rolling out in real life. I would think, quite frankly, that cell phones would only, you'd only need 23 of them at this point, not a whole uh, fourth. So uh, I'd appreciate uh, uh, I can check that report. On that. I'm sorry? I said I can check on that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Campbell Gooch. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. The iPhone 11 thing is comical at best. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, hey, I had a completely other question, but I would also like to know, like, how many iPhones 11 <laughs> it was? Like, is it more than 46? Um, and then also, uh, I have, like, two quick questions. Uh, policy, the policy advisory report that was emailed to the mayor's office, the vice mayor, city council members, and CJ stakeholders, like, did we receive any responses? And then, two, um, I would like to hear more about the research proposal that's, that, that we were sent that's also a part of the executive report as well. Sure. Um, I only re received a response from the Department of Emergency Communication. Um, Acknowledging it. Oh, I'm sorry. And I received it from John Bunton that said he received it too and was looking forward to reading it. And that was the only two responses that I that I got. And I noticed that um, one of the council members had um, tweeted out that she was going to be reviewing it and she had posted our recommendations. So, you know, I acknowledge that, you know, that was an acknowledgement as well. So that's that's all I've heard from. And as for the research proposal that's coming in May, um, that is the second part to um, the, when, we broke the, when we broke the report up, um, there was still some things that uh, we believe were, that needed to be addressed um, as it pertains to um, law enforcement accessibility and community outreach in limited English proficient and deaf, deaf and hard hearing communities. Um, and so that is what the research proposal will be about. Um, Director Fitcher, just in, I'm asking this, um, you, but I'm open to ideas here from the board. So, the COB has had, um, since our inception, this, and you tell me, is it really an official designation as a CJ stakeholder, or is it unofficial and arbitrary here? Um, let me pause just for a quick answer there. Do you understand it to be an official designation? No, I don't. I think that when we were, when when I first came on and we had a different um, administration, I was under the impression that that is what we were. Um, and since then, I do not think that. I don't think that we've been designated as a CJ stakeholder. 
Okay. So I, I feel that um, I, I feel I feel that, and I'm of course taking all these notes, um, the questions here into this conversation with uh, Mr. Button later this week. But there is something that uh, I'd like to just get. I'd love for us to just take a moment to brainstorm here. What if we don't have not just the cooperation on paper or in spirit, but in action of the mayor's office and to ensure that we are fully, and by we, I mean uh, our, our staff, executive director, Fitcher, and others are not fully and um, frequently involved in these meetings and discussions because I'm, re I'm reminded of our last in-person meeting um, where we were having a similar conversation around, or maybe meeting before that, around the uh, the deployment or the pilot, the the event that took place, right? And and I we did, by the way, receive quick response from, uh, from Councilman Pulley and scheduled a meeting. He quickly scheduled a meeting and offered his apologies there. But for these other meetings, I don't know if Mr. Button and others were in the meeting about purchasing the iPhone 11s or the storage of the cameras. But I find it, uh, I find that we are in a position where we can no longer just say it would be a most appropriate or we are disappointed when you don't involve us, but rather there needs to be something in black and white where if if the MCNO or Director Fitcher is not involved or invited, then it is a violation of something. They are going to get something. But if you all tell me, and I'm, I'm Dr. Fitcher, you let me know, Mr. Pinkley, you let me know too from a legal perspective that it is the full discretion of the mayor and his staff to decide who's involved there, then I'll I'll have no choice but to yield here and we'll simply continue to push forward and we'll make it very no, noticeable and known that we continue to be left out of these conversations. But I don't feel um, that maybe I feel that perhaps we're not using all the tools in our arsenal and I, I want to use them. I, I am I'm troubled by all of this, I'm frustrated by all this, and also it's fixable. It costs nothing for you to send an email and to let Director Fitcher know that a meeting's taking place. That costs nothing, so I don't wanna hear about a budget. And it also costs nothing to have consideration of the community where you're making decisions that impact the community. That's not a budget conversation. So. One, I'll get answers to all of this, um, but I, I welcome others' ideas on this. And Director Fitch, you let me know, Mr. Pinkley, too, if the board should consider something. Uh, do we need to engage our legislative, uh, the members of the council? Um, is there perhaps a uh, uh, some type of law that needs to be put in place? Or do we just need to figure out how we get the community more engaged here? Because uh, we can't keep having these conversations. Well, yeah, I think that a designation as a criminal justice stakeholder is important. I mean, that is what we are. We are here to um, do the work of the community, but as well as, you know, have a collaborative relationship with the police department. Um, the work that we're doing, administrative investigations, and we are, at some point, we'll be presenting, presenting investigations to you to make decisions. Those decisions, I think, fall within the line and scope of a, a criminal justice agency. And so I don't know who to reach out to in regards to that. I'm assuming that that designation would have to come from um, the mayor's office. I think that when they even put out their application for board members to be um, on the board, they mentioned things like having, an in, having some knowledge of the criminal justice system and civil rights and liberties. And so, you know, if that's the case, then I would say that this, that is the work of a criminal justice agency. Can, can I ask also, Mr. Pinkley and Ms. Ross, I'll come to you here, I see your hand raised. Can you, uh, could you please reach out? This is the official question I have here, Mr. Pinkley. What, what are our available next steps? Um, and, and if that's the best way for us to get an answer, I'd like to know, um, is there anywhere, you know, written anywhere down the line that someone's written out what, you know, who the CJ stakeholders are? Um, is that something we need to work from within with our community partners and those that are on the council to be 
to have the effect that, you know, uh, brought to light here and brought to fruition? Or should we engage the mayor's office and he would like, you know, and his staff would like to lead us in this important community effort? Um, I, I'm happy if the board agrees with me here to, to make that official request. But I do think that if there's a, such a thing as a designation as a CJ stakeholder, perhaps we need it written in black and white. Because I can't imagine any of these meetings taking place without a member of Metro Police not being involved. Um, and so uh, whatever we need to do to make them understand that the same weight that exists over there exists here, I, I really would appreciate uh, as much knowledge as possible there. Is that, is that clear, Mr. Hinkle? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Ms. Ross? Yes, I, so, I totally agree that we need to have something in black and white as to are we a stakeholder or are we not? And what what can we do to become a stakeholder? Uh, and then I still also think that we're going to have to get some community involvement after we get if we are or if we're not a stakeholder. I agree, Ms. Frost. Thank you. Mr. Campbell Gooch? Uh, I am curious, before I speak, I'm curious about uh, what Dr. Hildreth and uh, Timothy Hughes and Sean Whistle think. Uh, but also, like, every board member on this call, like, I'm just curious on about, like, what, what they think as well. But I also want to say, uh, whenever we've done anything, or whenever we've gotten over mountains, it has taken, like, a full frontal, whether it be... Um, making sure that our media knows, making sure that uh, our community moves knows. So I think there's several things that we can do to make sure, like, the public is informed when we left out of these things. And I think it's really simple. Like, one, we can start letting our people know through our email list. I don't know how big our email service is. But then also, like, we can inform our local media. Because I know that the COVID thing is taking over all the airways. But I do know people are also looking for something else to go to and be informed about. And I think if we start activating uh, media members like we did before with the MOU negotiation, and I'm not talking about like filling on the media, just informing them on what's happening, just very much so black and white, I think it'll uh, also force the uh, the narrative to force a response to start forcing people to communicate with us because I am exhausted by constantly trying to stay patient and get it and constantly be told that the olive branch is too short. So mm -hmm. I think we can do it. I think we can do I think the and both chair, what you what you were mentioning earlier, I think we can engage community members like in the very basic ways of emails, uh mailing letters. But I also think we can also inform our media outlets as well. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Mr. Hughes, then I'll come to Mr. Sweeney. Thank you so much for allowing me an opportunity to speak. I appreciate um, Member Campbell Gooch's uh, point as it relates to the concern that we have about the focus uh, primarily being kind of diverted from the emphasis and the, the effort that we're making. Uh, to try to make sure that the community is involved in this process, is, in, is connected uh, with regard to what is going on, on, on in terms of the priorities that are being set. I would remiss if I, I did not acknowledge the fact that, you know, we're, we're now in a moment where, you know, COVID-19 seems to be the primary focus, in part because there's so many things that are ancillarily connected to it. But it is incredibly important that we make sure that the public is aware of what is happening with regard to these body cameras in, in, in so much as it does have an impact on whether or not we are viewed as a credible board, but also we want to make sure that we understand how it is that they're negotiating these priorities. The COVID-19 epidemic and concern is very important and significant in terms of budget investment and so forth, but so is public safety. So are the concerns uh, that led to the creation of the Community Oversight Board in the first place. And it, shouldn't, it, is, it is frustrating to me as a board member that we become aware of things like the body camera rollout or um, efforts being made to educate the public about the body camera uh, rollout via um, uh, posts on social media rather than direct notification from the mayor's office or from an MMPD in a direct line of communication. So I would imagine that that is also a concern of other board members, but also it is in many ways a, a sign of disrespect to the community 
because we're not being allowed with sufficient time and information to be able to participate in those kinds of activities. And particularly now that we are social distancing, we need to be able to get as much information with as much lead time as possible so that we can share the information with the relevant stakeholders uh, as, as, in as much uh, time as possible so that there can be sufficient notification and participation. So thank you so much for the opportunity to allow me to give voice to that. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Greatly appreciate it. And go to Mr. Sweeney, followed by Dr. Hildreth. Um, while we've been on the meeting, I, I was able to look on a Metro website and found that there is an official site for criminal justice planning and that there was an organization that was set up by Mayor Purcell in 2000 and then it's gone through various changes after that, including an official establishment by the Metro Council in 2005 of a Metro um, criminal justice planning as a department of the Metro government. And then it goes on that site to list who's on the criminal justice steering committee and who's on the criminal justice planning advisory board. And, and then there's various staff that goes with that as well. So it, it seems like the MNCO should look at that site and delve into that further. And then it looks like maybe the proper avenue is to go to the council and get the ordinance amended in order to make sure that we are members of both the steering committee and the um, planning advisory board as well. Thank you for that mm -hmm. information. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Dr. Hildre. Thank you. Um, I want to thank member Campbell Gooch for asking for my remarks. I want to thank Director Fitchert for her historical recitation of the conversations stemming from the February full board meeting where the board requested that there be an emergency um, return to the negotiation table that having served as the designated negotiator for the board, I followed up immediately and met with John Button, I believe the next day. It was somewhat of an informal, although very substantial meeting, uh, after which I contacted Director Fitchert immediately as we have an established pattern of doing. And out of that came two things. One, I urged strongly upon Mr. Button the recommendation that he take to the mayor's office that there be a clearly and uniquely dedicated representative from the mayor's office to the community oversight board. If you will recall back in February, one of the difficulties was that um, there was nobody from the mayor's office in the room. We were meeting in the community center um, at that time and we looked up and there was nobody there. And so one of them, the recommendation I made is that this is important enough to the point that my other board members have made. The public needs to know that the mayor's office is listening to our conversation in first person and interacting with us immediately so we can eliminate these gaps in communication and the perceived, if not actual, disrespect and misunderstanding that can creep in because of them. And that recommendation was um, taken in a positive manner. We also, between the three of us, Director Fitcher, Mr. Button, and myself, came up with two or three suggestions for um, solving the problem at hand of making sure that the interviews could go forward. So I wanted to preface my remarks saying that we had been on the path, I believe, to establishing at least an immediately immediate response relationship. When there was difficulty, we went straight from this formal board meeting to the mayor's office and began to have dialogue. And then it was, as Director Fisher indicated, not more than three days later, 
that the tornado happened. Um, Director Fitcher and I met each other in Costco when we were purchasing emergency uh, supplies to take back to the centers in 37208. Um, and, and so, yes, it goes off the rails, but then we have today and this morning and once again we need to address that i am sitting here wondering first in my identity as a member of the community wondering what it's going to take for the mayor's office to understand that community safety and this community oversight board is as much of an has as much enduring importance and significance as any of the other emergencies that threaten the health, safety, and welfare of all of the members of this community, including tornadoes, including pandemics. We do not stop paying attention to the fire department because we have a tornado or a pandemic. We do not stop paying attention to the police department because we have a tornado or a pandemic. We cannot stop paying attention to the community oversight board because we have a tornado or a pandemic. And so knowing that, and I, I need to disclose that I was late coming onto this call because I was still on a Zoom meeting at work. When I hung up and was looking for the call-in number here, I noticed that I did have an email in my inbox from John Button. Um, it was timestamped. 2:27 p.m. today minutes before I and I just looked at it minutes before I joined your call he simply indicated um, that this issue had come up today um, one quote he has obviously this makes nobody happy and he asked that he and I can speak further about this after the meeting is over so my first remarks came as a member of the community. My second, why am I on the board? I was appointed as one of the two mayor's designate. So I believe that that um, brings with it a responsibility to fully communicate with the mayor's office at every available opportunity. So my commitment to this board and also to the members of the public who created this board and are paying attention to our actions is that as soon as this meeting is over, I will respond to Mr. Bunton. We will resume communication and then I will follow up with that with Director Fitcher. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hildreth. Mr. Witzel. Uh, yes, I just wanted to um, say thank you to Mr. Campbell Gooch for um, asking to hear my thoughts. I really uh, um, agree with everything that I've heard thus far. Um, I feel like we definitely need to a, a seat at that table, and I don't understand why we wouldn't be considered a, a CJ entity. And um, as Ms. Ross said, I think we need to find out what we need to do in order to make that happen, but as well as um, not just informing the community, but uh, um, engaging them in a way to rally their support so that um, it is known that it's not just us requesting um, that we be at the table, but that the community wants us there as well. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Whistle. Thank you very much. Mr. Sweeney, uh, I see your hand raised. Sorry, I just failed to take it down. Thank you. Director Fitcher. Yeah, while um, when, when Dr. Hildreth was talking, I went and looked at my email and I received an email from Mr. Bunton um, while we were in this meeting. Um, and he says, I just want to um, read a short part of it. It says, um, as you know, our original plan specified a two-phase pilot um, for the um, body cameras, 26 cameras to the DUI and traffic enforcement starting March in March 20, I'm sorry, in March, 20 additional cameras in May. The First phase is underway. The second phase is on hold due to the severe revenue shortfall. Body worn cameras continue to be a priority for Mayor Cooper. They were on a handful. They were one of a handful of issues he highlighted in his state of Metro speech. And once we get through the current budget crisis, moving to phase two of the pilot will be a top priority with full deployment to follow. And he said he hoped that was helpful. 
D Director Pitcher, can I just be clear here? When, when did when are you saying? So you just got that communication? Yeah, that communication came in at one fifty p.m. on an email. Too. Okay, Mr. Goddard. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Chair. I, I share the concerns that have been raised. All of them. Uh, a lot of them are political, as has been discussed, in the sense that we're a governmental entity and its relationship to other governmental entities in the community. But some of the issues are, are legal, particularly the basis for the police department in not giving some of the requested reports, uh, what our status is as a an organization vis-a-vis -vis the criminal justice system. And that's it. I, I'm just a suggestion. It may be appropriate uh, for Mr. Pinkley uh, to speak with uh, Metro Legal Director Bob Cooper. Uh, he's the top legal officer of Metro on these various legal issues. He has served on this board and understand those issues, and that may be just helpful as part of the conversation. Just wanted to throw that in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garter. Appreciate it. Dr. Pitcher, is your hand uh, raised in there? Oh, sorry. No problem. Mr. Holloway. Uh, yes, um, she was saying something about uh, the cameras. Um, some going to the DUI. I know DUI uh, enforced units are, should already have body I mean, uh, cameras in their vehicle, but where the, the camera mostly need is where a patroller has um, in the high crime area, and that's where we've been having most of our um, shooting. And so uh, if we do get some, we want to definitely make sure to go to patrol in the, in the high crime area. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Any additional uh, comments or questions here as it relates to the executive director report? Any of the topics we, we were talking about here? So everyone, I will uh, follow up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hildreth as well for committing to uh, following up directly with um, Director Fitcher. Director Fitcher, if you could do me the favor just so that we continue to stay on up and air here and, and uh, no one-on-one -on -one communication between the board members as it relates to board matters. When you hear from um, uh, Dr. Hildreth, I'd appreciate it if you could just make sure you loop me in. I want to make sure also, as I have this conversation with Mr. Button as well, that we are all as fully aligned as possible. And then I will make sure that I can communicate um, perhaps over the weekend, um, just a, a full snapshot of anything that we have learned. And uh, Mr. Pinkley, if you could get back to me also here on the, the legal uh, response here, our advice here about what, what might be our next steps. Um, I think we just need to all put our heads together and we need to have a action here uh, on how we're going to move forward. Uh, the mayor's office can certainly step up and make all of this a lot easier uh, by committing this to black and white themselves. And I understand they have a lot on their plate, so we're happy to stand in and help them in this matter. But this remains as important. This is life or death um, for many. Uh, especially as it relates to safety in their community. So we're going to act accordingly here. So I just want to thank everyone for their energy uh, and efforts here. Um, with that, we're going to move forward with the COB Executive Committee uh, elections discussion topic here. Mr. Pinkley sent ahead of the meeting uh, some uh, documents and information for us to all just be aware of and to read through. Uh, I am actually trying to pull up some of that myself here. Um, if we could, uh, Mr. Pinkley, I'll give you the floor here, and uh, we'll uh, kind of traverse through this uh, bit by bit here to, to make uh, the most of it. And I will also understand that some of us may have comments or questions here. I'll pay very close attention and uh, try my very best to call on people as there are questions. Mr. Pinkley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think there actually may be a better way to broach this discussion. So. If you'll, if you'll bear with me at the beginning, we may not have to delve into it too much. Sure. Um, so we were originally scheduled to hold elections today. Um, based on my, that's based on my misunderstanding that the first year, uh, the board's intent was to have two six month periods. Uh, but the way that the bylaws are written, uh, it supports holding annual elections in August of every year. So the August 2019 elections were supposed to have been for a, a year long term. Uh, I went back and reviewed the August elections video uh, and the term length wasn't discussed at that meeting. Uh, so I wanted to confirm with the board today that they understood that the August election was for a full year 
and they want to continue in the future holding their annual election elections in August, uh, which is how the bylaws are currently written. Uh, if that was the board's understanding and they're comfortable with that moving forward, uh, then there's no reason to dwell on this and we can move on to the next agenda item. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Finkley. Mr. Sweeney. So, um, I, I chaired the committee when, when we drafted the bylaws and so I went back in and, and looked at minutes in history to refresh my recollection. And um, you may recall that when we had our first board meeting, we decided at that time to elect officers. But we decided because we didn't know each other that well at that time that the term of the original um, uh, officer should be for six months rather than for a year. Um, after that, we started drawing up the bylaws. And the first <clears throat> proposed set of bylaws that came to the board, um, if I was all right, in March, had in there a six month term for all of the officers with a um, cover memo saying that, you know, we had this first six months and the board would need to decide whether that's what they wanted to do for other terms going forward or after that first six months, they wanted a different length of term. So then we went through the drafting process and in the drafting process, <clears throat> there was a proposal that was made it would be better to have one year terms. And so after the six month period ran, that then we would go to one year terms at the end of that first six month term. And that was then presented to the board and the bylaws were enacted in May of that year. And then the following August, we had our election of board members under that bylaw provision, which would be for a one year term. So <clears throat> if you also may recall, we have a provision for easy amendment to the bylaws because we figure that during the first year or two, we would be feeling our way and might decide that we wanna do things differently so that we didn't um, wanna get locked in too tightly to the bylaws. So the bylaws currently make the existing term run through August. If the board wants to change that term, I would suggest prospectively, then it could make that decision um, sometime before August and alter whatever the term that the board thinks that it should be. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. I want to um, let me just acknowledge first the board member, Mr. Uh, Holloway, and then we can go to Mr. Pinkley. Um, I understand what the bylaws, what we voted on, or what we were working on, but we had people that rolled off at the end of January, so we'll do an election now, and uh, so we can uh, complete those positions. Mr. Pinkley? Mr. Pinkley, I have you still on mute there. I don't know if you, I see your hand raised, but I don't know. If you... uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I have uh, two things that I'm, I'm gonna bring up. Uh, one, to address Mr. Holloway's uh, statement. There is a provision within the bylaws that addresses if someone is to either resign from the board or step down from the executive committee uh, the chair is able to appoint someone to fill that role for the remainder of that term. Um, so another thing to mention is that um, I spoke with Director Fitchard and she indicated that there are other boards that have similar issues where people will roll off the board without fulfilling an entire term. So I don't want the board to think that just because people are, are rolling off, that means they have to change the bylaws or change when we hold elections. 
Um, really, this discussion is just to make sure that everything is on the table for the board to to make a decision on how they want to hold their elections, um, both now and in the future. Thank you, Mr. Pinkman. Mr. Campbell Gooch. Um, I just wanted to voice my support for keeping it at a year, which would leave it at August. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Uh, there, uh, Mr. Holloway, is your hand raised again? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, okay. We had people that uh, resigned and we had a uh, term ended uh, this year in January. Then we we were we we were going to do an election, so I keep keeping down the road. I don't know. So we do an election. Let's have one. Mr. Martinez. Yeah, I also want to say that that's my recollection of the events too. That the first six months we, well, the first time we elected officers, we elected them to serve a six-month term. And then when we elected officers the second time, um, we didn't speak about the six month term. So given that the bylaws say it was gonna be a year term, I think it is also a good idea um, that we continue on with, um, or hold off on elections until August. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Uh, so Mr. Oh, wait, Mr. Campbell Gooch, is your hand raised? No, I just didn't drop it. Thank you. So, Mr. Pinkley, um, thank you for the information. Uh, thanks to all the board members. I want to be clear here. If we make no, um, if we make no additional, um, there can certainly be a, a motion. Anyone can do that. Certainly a will if they like. But if there is no additional action here, is it that we would just simply hold until what the bylaws state, which is August, to have the next uh, executive committee elections? Uh, yes, essentially, we would just table elections until August. Okay. okay. Uh, is so. Um, we're we're still on this topic here. Is there any additional comments? Anyone wants to make a motion? It, without a motion or any additional action, we would simply um, for Mr. Holloway. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we have an uh, election in uh, May. Thank you, Ms. Holloway. Is there anyone that seconds it? Anyone that seconds this motion? Okay. I, please feel free to unmute and correct me, but I don't see anyone that seconds uh, the motion that it would, uh, the motion would uh, would fail. So we will, uh, is there any additional uh, comments or questions here on this particular topic before we move forward? Okay, not, we will, thank you, Mr. Pinkley. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Fitchard. If you could um, um, assist me here, and so just be clear, so we're all on the same page here, um, we will, um, Reconvene, we'll table this, uh, the executive committee elections, uh, and they will be held in August. However, in the month of June, July rather, we will uh, ensure that uh, the committee uh, reconvenes, we'll readdress it, we'll come back to this topic so that we can go through the proper, um, the proper uh, protocol to ensure we have the committee in place, and we'll also discuss procedures so that it remains fair. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ross, I see you here. Yes, yeah, so the committee has met and made a rec recommendation already. So will we cancel that and go back to the table in June and July as you suggested? Mr. Ross, I think that's a, a great question. In my mind, I um, you certainly can't, the, the committee can certainly reconvene, um, but the recommendation has been made. Mr. Pinkley, if you have uh, thoughts on that, let me know. However, I think the recommendations of the, the nominating committee um, should certainly be uh, considered and brought forth for the board. So, Mr. Pinkley? Uh, so, what we'll do is I will reach out to the nominating committee sometime in probably June 
Uh, the bylaws require that we have to meet prior to June 22nd. So what I'll do is reach out to everyone in June. Uh, if, if the nominating committee is comfortable with the people that they've already nominated, uh, then I don't feel there'd be a need to have another meeting just to renominate the same people. Uh, if the nominating committee wants to meet and have further discussion, then I'll happily schedule a meeting for, for the, the three members to meet and discuss it. Thank you, Mr. Pinkley. Um, Mr. Holloway, is your hand raised? Apologies. If yes, it is. Uh, since we uh, have made the decision, if the election in August, then we need to know whatever the process and whatever we're going to be running need to be uh, decided 30 days before the August election. Yes, and I believe, Mr. Pinkley, correct me if you're wrong, if I'm wrong, but uh, in what you just shared here, that would be the reasoning for the committee meeting prior to the June deadline, right? That's correct. Okay, so that way we get to Mr. Holloway's point here, they would uh, have uh, at least a minimum of 30, 30 days notice there. We'll be good on that uh, as well. Any other questions, comments here on this topic here? I want to make sure I miss anyone's hand. Raise. Okay. Director Fitcher, do we have any uh, anyone that's called in or any recordings to play for the public comment? Director Fitcher, are you on mute here? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just, yeah, I'm sorry. We did not have any public comment pertaining to um, the Community Oversight Board. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as it relates, we'll move to new business and announcements. Any new business or announcements anyone would like to make? Mr. Campbell Gooch, I see you. Yeah, feel free. Yes, um, as like as people have talked about before, we were hit with a tornado, like right before the COVID lockdown in early March. And I just wanted to tell folks that uh, I've been working to make sure we have an 18 month rebuild process. So since the tornado, my position has changed. So I just wanted to let people know on this board, if they know any community members who are in need of service, especially around rebuilding their homes, uh, please let me know. Please pass those community members along. We're hoping that we can start rebuilding full structures. At this point in time, we only have the capacity to rebuild rooms and things like roofs and, and things of that nature. But hopefully we can re present a full rebuild sooner or later because we want to make sure that people that were affected, especially homeowners without home insurance, by the tornado have an opportunity to stay in their homes. So I just wanted to give people here an update on that. And also, like I said before, if you know of any community members, feel free to pass them my number or send them or send me their contact. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Gooch. Is there information that um, we that uh, can be posted on just on the community site or is uh, contact information or a link that can be shared out maybe? Absolutely. Uh, you can go to like rebuildnorthnashville.com and that's where all the rebuild information is as far as what I've been organizing. And I know that it says North Nashville, but we have been organizing to rebuild Nashville in general. That's Once great. Again, and, and yeah, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go right ahead. I was going to say, I was just going to repeat it. You can go to rebuildnorthnashville.com. Rebuild North Nashville. Is it North N-O-R-T-H? Yes, I'm glad you asked that. That was a real North Nashville business you just did, Ashley. Oh, yeah. I know how I say it, so I just want to make sure y'all weren't spelling it the way I say it. But it is uh, N-O-R-T-H. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Campbell Goose. Director Fitcher. Dr. Fitcher, Dr. Fitcher, I believe you're on mute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had I was on mute again. Sorry. Um, 
I wanted to talk, um, uh, mention the fact that there are, there were some people who were in this meeting that were in the executive committee meeting and that I had talked about some training um, that we were trying to get together. The NNCL was trying to prepare some training. Um, and I think maybe bringing this up at the next executive committee meeting uh, to have some volunteers from the board who might want to assist with the participation in a training program for MNCO. Um, and then talk about the retreat that was listed in the in the rules in regards to the board. Um, we haven't really discussed that. Um, and so I think that that would come up in our next executive committee meeting on how to, you know, maybe planning up a retreat for you guys or um, talking about how that would look and, you know, when, when's a good time and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's all I have on that. Any questions? Is everyone clear on the last few points here Dr. Fitcher made? There's um, a development of uh, training in-house here uh, so that uh, future COB members, uh, board members, uh, and new MNCO staff, as the staff builds out, uh, would be able to go through that training. Mr. Holloway. Uh, that retreat sounds great, but we still got to look and see what goes on in the city today with this uh, this virus. Right. Yeah. So the retreat can be done. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, it can be maybe meeting, you know, via Zoom or something like that. But you're you're absolutely right. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Dr. Fitchett, any additional new business or announcements? Okay. With that, if there's nothing additional, I I. Uh, we have oh, Miss Miss Ross. Miss Ross. Miss Ross, you're on mute still. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to tell everybody to be safe and stay at home as much as possible. Thank you, Miss Ross. Really important uh, advice. Um, that we all need to adhere to. Even as the city starts to open back up again, I advise you to stay in, like Ms. Ross is saying, unless you absolutely have to. Um, thank you so much. Um, any additional comments here, Mr. Sweeney? I see you unmuted, but uh, did you have your hand raised? No. Okay. Thank you. Is there, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Sure. Um, this is Matt. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Anyone second? I second. That's Ms. Ross. Thank you, Ms. Ross. Uh, and, and thank you. I didn't see the hand raised. Thank you, Dr. I heard you as well. But the motion was made by Mr. Sweeney, seconded by Ms. Ross. Um, all those in favor, please, and we'll go through the uh, roll call vote here. So we have Mr. Campbell Gooch. Aye. Aye. Mr. Aye. Goddard. Aye. Dr. Hildreth. Aye. Mr. Holloway? Aye. Mr. Hughes? Aye. Dr. Lewis? Absent. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Ms. Ross? Aye. Mr. Sweeney? Aye. Mr. Whistle? Aye. 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 Chair Davis vote aye as well. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned at 4.43 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.